Today, I'd like to talk about a simple piece of mathematics that is used in many important areas. It's called linearization. When it is applied in clever ways, it yields some very useful results. This video will discuss how to derive the linearization function, what are some of its applications, and why should we all care about this. Please note, this video assumes knowledge of differential calculus. Let's take the function f of x as an illustrative example. Let a equals 1 be the value of x where we want to approximate f of x. Let f of a dash be the gradient of the tangent line at the point x equals a. This is the first derivative of the function evaluated at the chosen value a. This result of 4 is the gradient for the function at this point a equals 1. We have the gradient, but we need to adjust the y-intercept, c, before this line is a tangent to the function. Let L of x and a be the linearization at the point a. This is what we seek to define. Recall the equation for a generic straight line, g of x. We can use it to represent the function f of x, and also its approximation at the point a, Note these functions are equal at the point A. Let's solve for C in the first equation and then use it to define the linearization at all values of x. Now we substitute C into the definition for linearization. We do some rearranging and some factoring. And what we have now is the standard form of linearization. When we graph it against f of x, it looks like this. Linearization is the fundamental component in Taylor's theorem, which some describe as one of the most important theorems in mathematics. Let's consider sine of x. The linearization at the point a equals 1 would be just the tangent at that point. It seems basic, but if we treat this as a Taylor polynomial, then adding terms to the Taylor polynomial will mean it will increasingly resemble sine of x. This is a Taylor polynomial of 2 degrees, and 3 degrees, and 4. Notice that all of these use the linearization function as the first two terms. You could think of linearization as a Taylor polynomial to the first degree. Sine and its derivative cosine are endlessly differentiable. That means that if you made a Taylor polynomial for sine with infinitely many terms, then this polynomial would be equal to the sine function. Another endlessly differentiable function is the exponential function, e of x. Its Taylor expansion leads to the famous result, e to the power of i pi minus 1 equals 0. Another important application of linearization, and not related to Taylor polynomials, is Newton's method for approximating the real roots of functions. This is actually just linearization rearranged algebraically. I don't know how to overstate the importance of Taylor's theorem, Euler's famous identity, or Newton's method, and yet those are just three applications of linearization. How could we begin to imagine our world without these important ideas that have been with us now for hundreds of years? And isn't it fascinating? that such a simple piece of mathematics can be so useful.